What's up guys? Thanks for coming back again. Today we are working on a steel steel trimmer. I don't know what it is. We'll, I'll show you in a sec. Brief backstory what happened with it. I picked it up for cheap. It was like 20 bucks. The guy said that it just didn't run. The weird thing was is that he only used like the the good fuel in it ever. Uh, he could have just said that. I don't know if he was true. Um, which it was that was kind of weird to me that that's what he said. Just I haven't here. I'll 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 flip the camera around. So here it is. It is a a steel FS. 55 RC. I I haven't checked, I haven't done anything to it yet. All I did was pop this off and just kind of take a quick, I don't even know what I did, but I just popped that off, that's all I did. One thing that I did notice, and I don't know if this is gonna parlay into the problem, that looks like somebody tried to get in there and did a very poor job of getting it back. If you can see like right here, that is uh, flush. That's not. Kind of a weird feeling, weird feeling that there's something else going on with it that I don't know. So I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna get these covers popped off. We'll get that plug out. We'll see if it has spark first and then just kind of go from there. I got Steel Moto Mix, not a paid sponsor yet. But um, this stuff's really good. That is the. This is not what's in here. I might need to shoot some of this down to verify that it will run. This is steel 50 to one mix, except this is the blend, like the, you know, you add it to the fuel that you pump from the gas station, and this is the engineered, um, you know, great stuff. All steels use a T27. This is a T25, that will work, but officially steel torques are T27, just FYI. All right, I'll pop that plug out. I have a um, spark plug tool. This is from a steel chainsaw. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it on there though. Um, sorry, this light is for it. Let me set this up a little better. Plug actually does not look bad at all. A little bit of carbon, which is normal. All right, if it has spark, let's see if that shows up. I'll zoom in a little bit. So if it has spark, it's gonna show up right there. Right at, that, right at the end of that little electrode. Just make sure it's grounded and uh, Oh, you know what? Ah, uh, okay. If you remember, I took this off. That keys into there, which spins the engine over. So I'm gonna put that back on really quick. Obviously we can't spin the, well, you know what? Executive decision. This goes in a counterclockwise pattern. It might show up clockwise on camera, I can't tell. But it is going counterclockwise. Um, the reason why I said it might show up clockwise on camera is because I have, <laughs> I have the camera, there's a screen. You know what, I'll take another video with my phone and I'll show you. This is my setup, this is shot off my phone. This is my setup. It's all dude. Um, the reason why I said, I said I think it's clockwise is because when I when I turn the when I turn the camera around this LCD screen that is I think what happens is because you see how like my hand from this video is moving to the left on the screen it's moving to the right if you put yourself in that person's 
vantage point, which is me. I mean, if you put yourself in this person's vantage point, see how my actual hand is moving to the left, but his hand, his hand is moving to his right. You know what I mean? That's why I said I think it shows up counterclockwise. Anyways, I'm, I am taking this too far. That's why I said it is going to look clockwise. I promise you it's counterclockwise. Okay, so in lieu of having to put this back on, I have a 13 millimeter socket that I am going to stick into there and spin the, en spin the engine over manually, just without having to do that. So, spark still should show up there. I'll zoom back in and put this in here and go to town. Okay, here we go. So there's no spark, I th think. So there is a, there's a lever right here, which you can depress and it allows this trigger. It's a safety thing. So just in case you hit the trigger, the line doesn't go So in order to, I'm squeezing on this trigger. See how it's not moving? Then if I depress this, the trigger will squeeze. Um, squeeze, squeeze. I have another steel, the one that, I, I, I don't use this one for my home, obviously. I have another one that I use for my home. It's a little FS80 something, I think. That has a lock on it. I'll show you that. This is also a steel. It's a little bit different model. But this has a, obviously the same, right? Trigger doesn't push. Hold that down, trigger pushes. There's a little, like, on-off kill switch right here where if I hold this down, hold the trigger down, it locks it into place. That way I can start it. And then that takes it off. So this, I don't know if you have to hold this down in order to get spark. Maybe, maybe not. Either hold this down or hold the trigger. I don't imagine you have to hold the trigger because this is, this controls the throttle. There's a little cable Right there, I'm squeezing on the trigger. There's a little cable that holds that. This is just a, this is just a safety. I'm gonna try again with the spark. I'm gonna hold this down. If that's not the case, I don't know what it is. Obviously, that's a kill switch. It was on originally when I spun the engine over. Just FYI, it was in the on position. I've never had it in the off position until just then. Um, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna hold this down. We'll see if that makes a difference. So, it's difficult to me for hold this down while I spin that over, just because I, I, I want to I try to keep this grounded. Okay, so I have that done. Down here we go, let's see. Let's check, we'll see, I'm curious. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but I did see, with my naked eye, the most faint spark that came out of that electrode. So, one of my worst fears is coming to fruition. What I think the reason why this was um, you know, sold for so cheap, he told me that he used the, um, you know, the, I, think it, I think the brand, it wasn't Moto Mix, I think it was uh, True Fuel. That's one that our Home Depot sells around here in Michigan. He had it in his garage, he pointed to it. It was a full can. He's like, yeah, I've always used that. And I just, it just won't start anymore. So I knew at the time when I bought it, I'm like, uh, if you use that fuel, you gotta be like brain dead in order to mess one of these things up, especially because it's two cycle. You can't, you can't forget to change the oil because the oil's already in the gas. Um, so I kind of, I have a feeling, we'll, we'll get into it. I have a feeling that just, there might be a poor connection in between the um, ignition coil and the flywheel. So we'll clean that up a little bit. Those can rust over time and um, we'll see what else is uh, what else is going on inside of there. I'm going to I'm gonna have to take all of these all of these off. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six six bolts, something like that. But we'll um, 
Might want to take this. Oops, might want to take this gas tank off too. It's just hanging by the fuel lines. Now nah, I'll leave it for now. Everything's kind of extremely loose and disassembled. So this, like the shaft is, you know, it's kind of scared whatever here with here. So that is the ignition. I think it's called a spark plug module. I think that's the name that technical, the technical term for it. Um, so there's, there's these pieces on the flywheel. As the flywheel spins around, Right there, I think that's considered a magneto, but this one is not. Um, on bigger, bigger style lawnmowers, I'm pretty sure that that is a separate that is a separate piece from the actual flywheel, meaning it can it can it can screw on and screw off. It's it's screwed on there. With this, it's obviously just on the same piece. These pieces come up under here. Obviously, this is um, curved, so the the points on here are also curved you know, kind of in that fashion. So as this comes up, it makes contact with them. They're magnetic. It sends that signal, which sends the spark up to the thing. So, I mean, this thing could be bad. It's not, I think, I wanna say this thing's only 20 bucks or something like that. But sometimes it just needs a cleaning. You can see there's a little bit of rust. I don't know if it's showing up on it. There's a little bit of rust on that. I don't know if that is the case. There's some rust on here. Again, a lot of these pieces rust over time. It's, it's normal. So I am going to, take that off all it is it's held on by just one bolt right there i'm going to take that off unplug these of these this connection right here and we'll see how dirty that is we'll see what we can do about that I was wrong. There's two bolts. Okay, so that looks Pretty stinking good. I want to say it almost looks brand new. Um, I don't believe this is a steel OEM part though. Might be able to search it by that part number. Interesting. Okay, well it's not that, this is the, what I was talking about earlier, where those, that flywheel comes in contact. These are those two points. There is a slight break up there. I don't think that that's any reason to believe why it wouldn't get spark. I don't need to clean this up at all. As you can see, it's it's nice. I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to check the gap. I'm going to see what the gap is. I'm just I'm, I might briefly search just to see if there's even a gap spec. Make sure that's good. I'll rule out the spark plug. I'll try another spark plug. And then if that's the case, I'm going to I'm going to take a minute, go off camera. I'm going to search to see if this it's not if this is not an OEM part, and this is probably what they replaced. And it's just not good i don't know maybe maybe not i i like to stick oem if i if i can you know if it's like seventy thousand dollars for the oem part i might try a different avenue I might try to find a used one that's oem not a brand new one this is definitely not oem though and that's probably the problem why i don't think this thing has a fuel issue i think it has a spark it well that was the stupidest thing i could have ever said I understand now why this had a problem. It's not, it's definitely not fuel, it is spark. A lot of times the problem with something is fuel, something sat too long. So let me put this back on. I'm going to check the gap, check a different plug, and then we'll see, see if that makes a difference. There's a gap that's supposed to be in between this ignition, you know, spark plug module and the 
flywheel, this thing that turns over, that little, those points right there. Business card, that's kind of the standard. I don't have a business card handy, I do have a playing card. So I'm gonna put that in there, secure it up to the, up to the flywheel, and then as you can see it's, I'm pulling up on it because it's magnetic. Let's see. I'm going to shove that in there, tighten that down, see if that does anything, change the spark plug, like we said, and go from there. While I'm in here, I'm gonna put a smidge of dielectric grease on that little post. Prevent corrosion. All right, so we got it set back up. Kill switch is off. That trigger is taped down again. So if this has spark right there. If that has spark, what that'll mean is that the gap was either too big or too tight. I don't think it was too tight, but if it has spark, that means it was too big. And we corrected it. Again, I saw, I don't know if it showed up on camera. It's like one. Okay, I'm still gonna put some, I'm just gonna, still put something down it and see what that does. All right, here we go. So now it's with the, this is with the um, pull, rope start. I'm gonna move this down to the floor. I'm gonna put a little bit more, more fuel in it. Okay, cool. Here's that carburetor. Um, let's let's take it apart. Well, obviously. All right. In my opinion. I don't think that it was the gap because I did get that spark before. I don't know if it showed up on camera. I'm curious when I do the edit to this, I'm curious if it will show up because I did see a similar spark when I first did it and nothing really changed after I adjusted the gap. It might have, I just don't think it did. So that's why I'm, in my head, I'm ruling that out and Man, this just, this just has me in all sorts of confusion. So that pickup screen, let's see if I can get a light in it. it, looks amazing. This whole thing actually does. I think I believe the guy when he said he used the, you know, the 40 to one, or, or the, not 41, the true fuel or whatever it was. Um, it looks good. There's really no inherent problems with it, looking at least. These, these diaphragms, they can get, um, I think the correct term for them is petrified, where they should move. This one feels a little bit, uh, 
on the crusty side. I'm not going to replace it for now. Um, we can address that if needed. And I'm actually, just based on what I've seen up this point, I'm not going to touch this. I'm not going to pull that off and clean it up and whatever. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it. It looks okay. Um, there's some, you know, garbage here on the outside that I might wipe off, but it does not look to be that bad. So I am not going to mess with that gasket just in order to prevent any further crap and issues. All right, I'm gonna get all that button back up and then we will dump some fuel in it and then hope for the best. The gas tank doesn't smell bad. It just smells like, just smells like rubbing alcohol. Interesting. Huh. I'm not going to get too... That recoil seems to be... messy. Maybe not. Something's not right. There is no rotation of the shaft, so it would start, it had trouble running, which I'm not gonna get too much into, but anyways, I'm gonna take this cover back off. I think that there was no, there was no connection in there somewhere, and I wanna try to figure out why that is. I have a full gas tank now, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Whereas before it was empty, which is a lot nicer. So I think that was what it was. There was some there was some deviation. Something was up in this, but it, now if I spin this around, as you can see, that is spinning around. So that was just off kilter. I don't know if you'd call that kilter, but that was just off. So anyways, I'm gonna button that back up. Okay, um, I took everything apart, I buttoned it all back up, I just tried to start it again the same way, same thing happened. I figured it would be pointless to show you because it's already been showed once. I'm getting some poor response from this. I'm just going to take it off. I don't want to, my gut is telling me not to. It just does not feel right, so I, I can't ignore that no matter what my gut is telling. My gut's probably being lazy right now. My instinct is just because I don't want to deal with it, but I have a feeling there's something going on inside of there that is messy. So I actually think that it was, sorry, all of that was off camera. I actually think that it was off. Um, it obviously is right now, but it just did not feel right.
Alright, let me wind this back up. Try that one more time. So, this rewind spring I know is going to give me hours, it seems like, of pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this on there. I'm actually going to cut this recoil rope. It does. It's not broken now. It's functioning the way it should. But I know when I get this on here if this is not all wound up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, get this recoil on, get it in there, and then I'm going to spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, shove the rope in, get it in there, pull it up with a pair of tweezers, tie it, tie the other side, and then let it go, and it'll be good. Well, that's the plan, but hopefully... This is why I didn't want to take this thing off, but I didn't know if it was necessary or not, because that was... it was... the coil was off. So I don't know. Okay, so it is all wound up back in there. Now the only problem, very careful, the only remaining goal is I have to hook this piece onto that piece. So I have a feeling that this is not going to work out and I'm going to have to do that all over again. But that's just me. So part of me wants to just keep like a firm, a firm press. That way if it does spring back, it only, I only lose so much ground. All right, well my first, I'm just going to put it in there first and just see. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this around six times. One, two, three, actually, you know what, very dumb, dumb thing to do what I just did, because I don't have that centerpiece back on. I am going to put that back on. There's a washer right there. This little cog sits in there, and then there on this cog, there's a little post right there, and that's what that sits on. So, once I get it in there, over the washer, and then we'll... Okay, finally got it thin in there. That took a while. I ended up just using a pair of snap ring pliers, putting it on. They're pliers that work. So like this, these are needle nose pliers and they, you know, you pinch them. You need to grab something, you grab it and, right, snap ring pliers are the opposite. They actually start and they pry something out. Very handy. So I got that. I'm going to wind it up and then feed that string in. But first, I want to make sure that this doesn't, this doesn't fray, get caught on something and then... So just hit it with a little, little melty melty. I'm gonna have these on deck too. I don't know what they're gonna do. I, they're they're actually kind of they're really um, they're really hard. So they might actually cause some damage. But just in case, I just want to have them because I'm gonna be doing this all in one hand. I want to have them just in case I need to clamp something. I don't even know if this is going to fix the problem. Okay. All right, what do we say six times? Now. Wow. First try. Right in. Right down. So now, I think this is where I'm going to use... I think this is where I'm going to use the...
Okay, so now that that's on there, I'm going to hold this string so when I take this clamp off, but now that we wound it up, this should retract. Oh, did I need to do... <laughs> okay, good news, bad news. The bad news is this. The good news is that it feels a million times better. There's no, I don't know what the word was before, but, but it just didn't feel right, but this feels right. So I'm gonna do that one more time, half of that process, but I do have to, I do have to dance around that stupid pin again. I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna do seven because I am just a hair short. And here's one more spin around. Here's one more spin. That was actually only a quarter. So I might go eight, just to be on the safe side. I might go eight, just to, just to give it that, that extra umph. Let's go with eight. I'm not gonna show all this, just because I already did, but just assume that it's right. or. Assume that it's done the same way. Didn't do eight, we did nine. All right, I'm gonna get that button back up, put this guy on there, and we will go from there. I still don't know if that is gonna solve the problem, but maybe. Okay, um, I, I'll show you what I mean really quick, but it, only wants to run when I have throttle and it idles or it, it's not idling but it's like idle speed and then when I let off the throttle it should idle by itself and then this should this should you know that's what it should do but it doesn't do that now I have the garage door closed it's cold outside, so I'll just show you what I mean really quick. I know it's dangerous to do this indoors and blah, 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 but it's only going to be for a second. I just want to show you what I mean. And then I'm going to go open the garage door. I'm going to be trying to start it and mess with it and tinker with some of the adjustment screws or whatever, so I don't, I don't know what I'll be, that I'll be talking much. So anyways, I just wanted to say that first before I went and did it so you know what was going on. Okay. So here is what it is doing. I'll just leave it on choke. Kill switch is off. I'm gonna hold that safety thing down and hold the uh, hold the throttle. Well, I'll show you first with no throttle, just the safety. Doesn't do anything. If I hold the throttle down, prime it a couple more times. Choke off, maybe. So that is actually a good sign. I've never seen that before. But did you notice when I let off, it let off too, so. So I'm gonna go mess with that. Mess with the adjustment screws and they're probably all out of whack, who knows? I, I, don't, I don't know. I do have to, I do have to bump this out, that side. There's a little like blade right there. I don't know if you can see it. What happens, or why that's there. This is called a, um, I think it's called a bump and go. I don't, they, every, every Echo Steel, they all have their own names for it. But it all, all does the same thing. You bump this out and it like, it moves this thing up and there's, this is wound around in there and it's like up in this thing to where it's it's just going around in a circle and you, it doesn't it doesn't get let out. As you're going along, you you throw it down as you're weed whipping, and you bump that on the ground, and it lifts that whole thing up, and it allows like a second for that line to be let out. So you're basically just letting a little window in of that to come out. When it goes around, it'll get nicked on there, right? So it's always going to be cut the same length. And then these, the little, the little shards at the end that get cut off, they just go flying. As you can see, this side is past 
that side is not even close. So once I get it going, I will get up and I will I will bump that out to where that that is an even load. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Here's a link to another video. Here's a link to something else. If you'd like to subscribe, maybe I've earned it. Hopefully I've earned it. You know, that like button is somewhere down here. Peace.